So we have to discuss Slack in a little bit more detail because we have to understand what positive Slack actually means. So let's look at this table. This is a table that lists the delays of five combinational path um, from path one to path five. When we first look at this, we find that obviously path three is the critical path. It has the longest combinational delay and it will define the uh, operating frequency of the circuit. We assume that T setup and T CQ are equal to zero if we even need to think about them. And let's calculate the amount of slack in each of the paths. Uh, path one is going to finish in 10. Uh, it needed to finish in 40 and so it has 30 slack. Path two needed to finish in 40 and finished in 15, giving it a slack of 25. Path 3 is the critical path. We are assuming we are operating at a clock period of 40 and thus giving it a slack of 0. Path 4 will have a slack of 10 and path 5 will have a slack of 20. Naturally, we will not see negative slacks in this case because we are using a clock period that is equal to the longest path, giving it 0 slack and giving everybody else positive slacks. But what does the fact that the other path have positive slacks mean? It means that these paths are working harder than they should, harder than they have to. They are finishing earlier than they had to. And so when we rem remember that the operating frequency, or more specifically, the propagation delay is inversely proportional to power supply, what this tells us is that paths with, po with positive slack are working faster than they need to, which means that they could have operated at lower supply voltages. The more the positive slack, the lower the voltage we could have used and still not have created a setup time violation. Why is this important? Because reducing power supply is going to reduce our power consumption and it's going to reduce it significantly. So by reducing the slacks, by removing the positive slacks that we have, we can minimize our power dissipation without even having to pay the price of parallelism or pipelining that we discussed in the previous video. So if we look at the first path, for example, path one, path one is operating at a supply VDD. Everybody's operating at an original supply VDD and it's causing it to finish at a time 10. It needs to finish at a time 40. So if it's finishing at a time 10, for supply VDD, it would finish in 40 at a supply of VDD over 4, which is 10 over 4 times VDD, 10 over 40 times VDD. And so we can reduce the supply by a factor of 4 and still have zero slack. So our new slack, if we reduce the supply by this much, is going to be zero because this path will now have a delay of 40. Similarly, for um, the second path, it's operating at a, at a, at a, at a delay of 15 needs to operate at 40. So if we reduce the supply by a ratio of 15 over 40, we would still have zero slack. And so we have zero slack if we reduce the supply by a factor of 2.67, which is 15 over 40. Path three cannot abide any reduction in supply because at the given supply voltage VDD, it already has zero slack. And therefore its supply reduction ratio is unity. For path 4, the amount of reduction is going to be 30 over uh, 40, and so uh, we are going to reduce by a factor of 1.33 to get a slack of 0. Obviously, the least amount of reduction in power, in, in power supply is going to be seen in path 4, because it is the path with the least amount of positive slack. It is the next longest delay after the critical path, path 3. Now path 5 finishes uh, at half the time it should have finished, so it could reduce its supply by a factor of 2 to end up with a slack of 0 or finishing just in time. Now because the supply has been reduced in the first path by a factor of 4, this means that the original power P1 in the first path is now reduced by a factor of 4 square or 16. To understand why, review the, the previous video. And so you will see a reduction of a factor of 16 in power. For the second, uh, for the second uh, path, we'll see a reduction of 2.67 square, which is 64 over 9. 
For the third path, we will not see a reduction in power because we have not seen a reduction in power supply because this is the critical path. For the fourth path, we will see a reduction by a factor of 16 over 9, which is the least amount of reduction in power dissipation because it had the least amount of, of uh, positive slack. And for path 5, we will have a reduction by a factor of, uh, five of, uh, of 4 because it, the supply was reduced by a factor of 2. So if we think of what we have done here, what we have done is that we removed all the original slacks and we moved into a new situation with zero slacks. The new situation with zero slacks sees every path as a critical path and reduces the power dissipation to the minimum possible level. So slacks are a waste. Positive slacks are a waste because they are causing the path to finish earlier than they should have which is not something that we want to see, right? Now, there's a problem with this, and the problem is we are assuming we can change the value of supply to any value we want. So on a path-by-path -path basis, we can choose whatever value of supply we want. We have a continuous scale against which to tune the supply, and we can tune it on a path-by-path -path basis, in fact, on a CLB-by-CLB -CLB basis. This is not the reality. The reality is we have a design library and that design library has a certain value for supply voltage. Some design libraries offer you two values of supply voltage, maybe even three, but no more than that. So you will have a high supply voltage and a low supply voltage and you can pick between them. So why is it that we cannot choose any value of supply we want? Because power supply and ground have dedicated networks to communicate them to the entirety of the chip. They come from external sources and they have to be distributed using wide metal wires to reduce uh, resistive drops and to reduce ground bounds on the pins. So distributing power supply is not an easy task and we have to have a limited number of power supplies. In fact, let's assume, for example, that we repeat this exercise, except that we have two possible values of power supply. A nominal value, we'll call it the high value, let's say it's 1 volt, and a low power supply of, let's say, 0.6 volt. And now each of the path is going to be able to choose one of these two uh, power supply levels, but nothing else. It cannot choose a lower power supply than 0.6 and cannot choose anything in between 0.6 and 1 volt. So again, we start with the delays 10, 15, 40, 30, and 20, with the original slacks of 30, 25, 0, 10, and 20. Now, these values are calculated using the VDD high, or the original power supply, right? So um, first of all, we will calculate the lowest possible power supply value that we can use. Meaning, if we are producing an output in 10 nanoseconds for the first path using a supply of 1 volt, what is the value of supply that we can use to give us a delay of 40 so that we have zero, path, zero slack? So this column asks the question, what is the supply we can use to give us zero slack? In fact, by substituting for VDD equals to 1 and looking at these values from the previous uh, from the previous uh, table, we can fill this column in this table. And so we understand that we here have 0.33 as the lowest possible supply. For the second row, it will be 0.375. For the third row, it will definitely be 1, because the third path needs to use VDD high equal 1 volt, because it used a 1 volt to produce an output in 40 nanoseconds. And so we cannot reduce the power supply below 1 volt. For path 4, we use 0.75, and for path 5, we use a supply voltage of half, which is half of 1. And now we have to make a decision for each of the paths. Can we use the low power supply, the 0.6 volt, or do we have to use the high power supply? We can use the low power supply if the path could use a voltage, a supply voltage lower than 0.6 volt and still have zero slack. So for path 1, for example, we will use the low supply voltage because the low supply voltage will allow it to preserve some positive slack. For the second, we will also use the low supply voltage. But for the third path, we have to use the high supply voltage. If we try to use the low supply voltage, it will create negative slack because this is the critical path. 
But even path four, which originally had some degree of positive slack, has to use the high supply. This is because the lowest supply it could possibly use before starting to create negative slack is 0.75. And thus, if it uses a supply of 0.6 volt, it will create a negative slack. So it has to still use the high supply of 1 volt. Path 5 is going to use the low supply voltage. This will allow us to calculate new values of delay. These new values of delay for each of the paths will be potentially higher than the original delays and potentially lower than the original delays, uh, potentially higher than the original delays, or potentially equal to the original delays. It depends on whether or not we were able to use the low supply for the original delay. For, for path where we used the low supply, we will have higher delays than we originally had, which means we have lower slacks than we originally had. So this is going to be a lower slack. This means that the uh, power has been reduced and the reduction is a by a factor of uh, 0.6 square. So it's always by a factor of 2.78. So for path 2, you'll see a reduction by a factor of 2.78. And for path 5, you'll see a reduction of 2.78. For path 3 and 4, they will preserve their original power dissipation values because they are preserving their original supply voltages. Now, we can also think of path as consisting of multiple CLBs connected uh, in cascade or in parallel or whatever, and forming a path between two registers. The granularity of the decisions that we make about whether to use the low supply voltage or the high supply voltage could include the entire uh, path or could include, uh, you know, on a CLB by CLB basis inside uh, the path. That's also uh, allowed. So, for example, for path uh, 4, even though we cannot use the reduced supply for the entire path, maybe you can use it for a few blocks within the path and still have positive slack or at least null slack at the end of the day, which allows us to reduce its power dissipation by a little bit. The advantage of using, um, we call this slack minimization. So the first table is called slack nullification because we end up with zero slacks for everyone. But that's not possible practically because we don't have an infinite number of supplies. So we call this slack minimization. At least we are minimizing the slack uh, that we see. The advantage of slack minimization versus parallelism and, and pipelining is that we are actually not adding any additional hardware. We are using just the available supplies and assigning them differentially to, uh, the, different, uh, to the different cells.